Hey, this is Chris from Financial Modeling Education, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to model out the sources and the uses, which is over here, as well as the pro forma balance sheet, which is taking our sources and uses and actually layering them into the company. So if you're a reader of the weekly email series, last week we talked about all of the adjustments that go into an EBITDA figure, the management adjustments, the diligence adjustments, and so on. This week we're actually going to talk about, all right, let's assume we actually know what this number is, and amazingly we all agree. How do we actually purchase the company and flow it through our financial model? So in this instance, I have a company, and let's just say based on some back and forth, we determine that it, our, our valuation is about $25 million, given that it has $3.9 million of adjusted EBITDA. And if I look at a multiple, it's about 6.4 times the EBITDA. So if I hit F2 on this, I'm just taking the valuation divided by the EBITDA. 6.4 times. We have to pay for this somehow, and this is how we model out the sources and the uses. And one of our goals is, after we buy the company, we want to make sure that the seller is going to own 49% of the equity going forward. But how do we know that? We have to figure that out. And that pro forma ownership is down here. So I have a few steps over here on the right. And first thing is, let's just look at this, the sources and the uses. Let's determine the purchase price. Well, we've already done that. It's $25 million and it's over here, so I'm just going to put a little X in there. That's done. Then we're going to calculate the fair market value of the equity, and we do that over here. We take the total purchase price, which is the $25 million from above, and then we subtract out the existing debt, which came from the company's balance sheet, and this is going to give us the fair market value of the equity. Not the book value, but what we think it's worth in the market. So we've done that. I'm going to put an X here. And then we're going to figure out the maximum terms of debt. Terms is just like uh, how many multiples of EBITDA of the debt are we allowed to obtain from our lender. And I have that modeled here. I've got three different pieces of debt, the revolver, the senior, and the mez. And we've got a quarter turn, 2.5 and 0.5. If I sum them together, it's a total of three and a half turns. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking the EBITDA and I'm just multiplying it by each of these figures. And so we're saying, and in total, our lender is giving us 3.5 turns of EBITDA of debt to help finance the deal, which is a total of about 13.6 million. And so that means the rest has to come from equity. And so that's down here. We've got the seller rollover, which means they're going to still stay in the business. They're just going to sell a piece of their equity, but not all of it. We've got the sponsor equity, which comes from the private equity firm, and then the LP equity, which is the investor equity that the private equity firm is going to raise, and this is effectively the plug. It makes up the difference. So to build out the sources and uses, let's actually go back to our checklist here. So we've got our maximum turns. The sponsor equity, I'm just going to put an X for this too because we have an assumption already. The private equity firm is basically saying, you know, we're going to put in a million bucks into this thing. So we've got our debt. We've got our sponsor equity. We want the seller to get his 49%, but then the LPs have to cover the rest. So we've got this assumption good to go. We have a few other pieces we just have to fill in. So next is let's figure out our fees and cash to the balance sheet. So we're going to flip over to the uses for this. So this is where the cash is going to go, right? Sources is we have to bring the cash to the deal. Uses is it has to go somewhere. So first is we're just going to pay the seller for the business, right, for their portion of it, because that's what we're acquiring. We're acquiring a majority position in the company. Then we've got to pay off some debt, but then the seller rollover equity is a little bit of a confusing process, but it's almost like you buy them out and then they buy right back into the company so they still have some ownership. What we're trying to figure out here is the fees, right? If we have to take on some debt, which we're going to do here, well, each of these pieces of debt comes with some kind of associated fee. And this is common if you're refinancing a home or really anything that involves any kind of transaction. It's always like a fee, right? You probably just know this inherently. So all of the debt has respective fees based on the type of debt. So I'm just taking the type of debt multiplied by the fee, type of debt multiplied by the fee, and so on, and just working my way down to the bottom. And then from there, I have some diligence fees. And this is third-party professional services firms that I'm going to hire to help me validate if the company is even worth buying in the first place. This is third-party accounting firms. This is lawyers. This is um, environmental consultants. Really, anybody that I've got to pay to help me determine whether or not I gotta get, I'm got to going to get this done. And then I've got what's here called the sponsor fee. 
private equity firms love to pay themselves for closing these deals. And so they're, they're going to bring some capital and actually return it to the firm. It's kind of like a fee for, hey, we put in all this work and all this diligence. We deserve some compensation for that. And then lastly, we're going to put some cash on the balance sheet of the company because the cash that's sitting there today is value that was created by the seller pre-closing, right? It's, it's theirs to own and it's theirs when they sell the company. So they're going to take the cash and it would be left with zero unless we actually bring cash to the deal. So we're going to put 500 on the balance sheet. So all in, we have our purchase price, right, plus all of these fees, which is going to get us to this 26,356 number. And so now we have to pay for it. And so the total uses or where the cash is going to go is equal to my total sources. And you can see they are linked together here. And so what ends up happening is if my debt amounts are relatively fixed based on the turns, the sponsor amount is relatively fixed, then the LP equity is just going to be the plug, right? It's the total that I need to pay less everything else that I already know. And so the last thing I have to just compute is, well, how much does the seller need to roll over? In other words, buy back into the company so they have 49% of the deal. Right now, it looks like they only have 31% if I take their $4 million as, as proposed divided by the total equity amount. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Goal Seek in Excel. And I have a shortcut key for that, which I think is Alt-6 on my keyboard. Nope, that is wrong. Maybe it's Alt-7. Okay, so I want to set this number to be 49%, right, 0.49 by changing the amount that the seller is going to roll over or buy back into the company. So I'm going to hit OK. Excel does some nice math for me really quick, and I figured out that, okay, at about $6.2 million and change, now down here, that will relate to the seller, or it'll result in the seller having exactly 49% of the equity post-close and this is what's called pre-dilution. Sometimes everybody gets diluted pro rata if we give some equity to the management team and what's called an advisory board later on. But the, the ratio here is still going to be 51% for the private equity firm and the, and the sponsor and the LP, and then 49 for the seller. So now we have, we've like reshuffled our deck a little bit to say, here's how the equity has to go down, given that the debt is fixed and the fees are fixed. The rest is going to come from the LPs. So that's the sources and the uses. Right, so let's go look at our checklist. Got our fees and balance sheet done. So we solved for the seller rollover using goal seek. So I'm just going to check that off. Okay. So sources and uses, just like going to the grocery store, right? If you're paying for $10 apples, well, you're going to bring $10 worth of your credit card to the grocery store. That's your source. And then the use is paying for the apples, right? It's still that $10. You just have to figure out how you're going to split that transaction up, but sources will always equal uses. So we get that, but now let's go to step two. How do we actually put this into the balance sheet? Because this is the hard part. This, all of these sources and uses have to actually be translated into a financial statement. So we've got another set of steps for this. And you can probably see why now I did not want to type this out in a newsletter, right? This would have taken me like three years. So to do the pro forma balance sheet, we have to go through a handful of steps, and I've mapped out all seven of them here, and then they correspond to the different columns that I've got here. And what we're starting with is the existing balance sheet uh, immediately at close. So you could think of this like this is basically, you know, 11.59 p.m. as of the, the date of close, and this is all actual information that came from the company's reporting system, and now we're going to perform several adjustments so that we know what the balance sheet is going to be immediately after close, which is like basically one second later is kind of how you could think about it. So the very first thing is we have to get rid of the old co cash, meaning the cash that's on the balance sheet. Because like I was saying earlier, this is cash the seller gets to keep, we're not going to keep it as the new buyer, it's this is not value that we've created. And so the way you get rid of that is you pull it out of the retained earnings. So I've got this box here, I'm just going to do equals negative, this cash number, and hit enter. And then you can see the offsetting entry here is that the cash comes out. And so now it comes down to zero and we have a cash free balance sheet. And this formula here, a little bit scary looking, but it's just taking what would happen on the balance sheet. You know, it's reducing liabilities and increasing equity or you know, going down if you were to pay for an asset. It's almost like a mini cash flow statement in each of these formulas. So this is the offsetting entry because it has to affect cash. 
So we pulled the cash out of the retained earnings, and that's part one. So that's done. Step two, let's bring in now the new equity, right? Because we're putting new equity on the balance sheet, which we calculated in our sources and uses, which is over here. So that's down here, same accounts, the new equity. This equals my new equity, which is here. I'm going to hit enter. I'm just going to paste special the formulas for that. So I've got the new equity, and you can see that's cash coming right into the business, right? This is new equity, new cash. So that's done. Now let's go to step three, which is bringing in the new debt. All right, we talked about the lender is giving us 3.5x total turns of new debt, and that has to come into the business as well. So this is going to be equal to all of our new debt. And I'm going to copy and paste these formulas down as well. You can see I've got this is cash coming into the business. These are my sources. And this is going to sum up to the 26,356, which is my total sources of cash. So everything has come to the company. But it's not going to sit on the balance sheet, right? We said we're going to finish with 500. And that's because we're using a lot of this cash to buy out a good chunk of the seller's old equity value, right? We've determined that this company is worth 25 million bucks but the seller is going to stay in it at only 49%. So we are going to pay them a lot of this cash because this is enterprise value that they've earned. So they're going to keep it for them uh, personally, basically. So the next step is we got to start paying them out. So let's, we've checked off the new debt. So now we're going to buy out the old equity. And this is a tricky one because we have to create what's called goodwill, which is a premium. The fair, the fair market value of the equity, which is here, is going to be some some value above the book value of the equity. It's the fair market value premium. So the first thing is, let's just buy out the old equity, which is here. So it's the negative contributed capital and the negative retained earnings to get all the equity to zero. But this is only, if I sum these up, 6.6 .6 million. And we've said the equity is worth 24-7. So we need to allocate that premium to goodwill. So I'm just going to take my fair market value of the equity, and then I'm going to subtract out, but I'm going to use the plus key here because these are negative numbers, right? Subtract out the contributed capital, subtract out the retained earnings, again, using plus because they are negative, and hit enter here. And this is my goodwill calculation. This is collapsed a little because I changed my screen resolution. So you can see we're paying out now the old equity at its fair market value. The plug for that basically is the goodwill. It's the premium to the book value. So that is now checked off. And then next we're going to pay off the old debt because we brought in new debt. Got to pay off what used to be there. So this is going to be equal to the negative of that. And this is just now cash. You could see the sources came in. Now the cash is starting to go out of the business. We've paid off the old equity, paid off the old debt. Now we've got to do fees and transaction fees and financing fees. So this is good. Next is records the transaction fees, and these hit retained earnings because they're an expense, right? So we said we've got to hire lawyers and accountants and other third-party service providers to help us assess whether this deal is even worth doing. We also are going to pay the private equity firm because they spent all this time and diligence doing all this financial modeling and everything else they got to do. So we're going to take those fees, and they're going to reduce retained earnings because it's an expense, right? If you had no revenue and just expenses, it would go directly negative to retained earnings. So it's just the sum of these two things. The negative 700 is right there, and that goes out of our cash. And then the last thing is we are going to capitalize our financing fees. And the old way of doing it was you put the financing fees as an asset on the balance sheet. Excuse me, this should not be here. There's a newer way to do it. And so in this template, I've actually linked to a great uh, blog post from Wall Street Prep that shows you the different ways to do it based on the type of debt. I actually find this a little bit overly cumbersome and frustrating. I still prefer to capitalize the fees from a modeling perspective because they get amortized nonetheless through the income statement. So I find this cleaner, but this is still worth re reading. So you just kind of know the updated changes to the accounting rules. So anyway, with that out of the way, the fees, right? Remember, these are equal to the debt fees, which is right here gets capitalized on the balance sheet, goes out as a fee, and we are left over with the 500 that we specified on our balance sheet here, which is our pro forma cash, and everything is in balance. So we've completed that final step. So let's take a look at our learning objectives. 
First is the seller puts in the equity to achieve 49% ownership pre-dilution. So that's the first thing we did. We used goal seek and figure out, okay, what does this number have to be? Because we know pretty much everything else to give them 49%. So we've completed that. Then number two is goodwill. The equity's fair market value premium over the book value. We basically said, all right, I've calculated the, the equity value here. And then I have to subtract out the book value of the equity. That's the premium. And I'm paying that out. So we've got that done. Then next is we're finishing with 500k cash on the balance sheet at close because we gave the seller all their cash. That was value they'd created prior to close, but we need 500 for just like working capital and contingencies in the first couple of days as we kind of like figure everything out. So we've got that on there. And this number now will change based on whatever we specify here. And right? if I make this uh, 1 million, it goes to 1 million and everything is still nice and clean. So let me put that back. And then lastly, it's just our balance sheet balances, right? This is pretty easy to blow up. It's a pretty complicated part of the model. But the reason that it works is everything that we bring in, we have an offsetting entry to cash to either spend it out or keep it on the balance sheet. And that keeps us in balance all the way through so that at the end of the day, we've got our pro forma cash, our fees, our goodwill, all the old stuff is paid off, all the new debt is brought in, and we have our new equity as well as the Seven, negative 700 to the retained earnings because at this point, like one second after the deal closes, that is our only expense of the business. So I'm going to put a link to this template. You may want to mess around with it. Um, I will resave it as a blank one so you can follow along and try to do this yourself. But this is what you do when you are modeling out a company. You've already got that EBITDA, but now you've got to pay for it, right, with the sources and uses. And then you have to reflect these sources and uses in the balance sheet, what's called the pro forma balance sheet, to get the accounting representation of how you pay for it. So this is your new balance sheet. And then from there, you're going to be using this as a basis for your forecast going forward. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you found this helpful. I will see you in the next one.